Today I am going to talk about how to actually make a budget. I know I've talked about how I budget and I've talked about budgeting, but I realized that um, there is a lot of people out there who don't actually know how to even get started making a budget or using a budget. So that is what we are going to dive into today. For those who don't know me, my name is Carly. I am a wife and mom of four boys. My husband and I are expecting our fifth baby this June. The first thing you're going to want to do when you are planning on making a budget for the month is you need to figure out the amount of money that you make every month. For some people, this can be a little bit more tricky because your paychecks may not be always very consistent, especially when you work in like retail where your hours kind of fluctuate or you um, work in a commission-based environment or you work and receive a lot of tips. For me, that's um, in my industry and here, obviously we work off of commission and tips. So our paychecks can definitely vary a lot um, from paycheck to paycheck. There's a couple things you can do if you kind of fall into the category of someone whose paychecks vary a lot more. So you can lowball um, your budget every month. So do a lowball estimate of how much you think you make. This can help out a lot because at the end of the day, it's a lot safer if you guess that you make less in a month and then work your budget from that than guessing that you are going to be making a lot more than you end up making, which then results in you uh, not having money to pay your bills and overdrafting your bank account or having to tap into you know, your savings that you weren't planning on having to tap into. So that's one option. Um, the other option is you can definitely also start living off of your last month's income. This takes all the guesswork out of budgeting every month. If you want to learn more about living off of last month's income, I have linked um, a video I have about that in the description box below. So go ahead and give that a look if you want to learn more about that. Once you have figured out how much you make every month, um, the next thing you're going to want to do is write down all your bills. Um, this is obviously going to take a little bit of work at first because you're going to have to go back and look at previous month statements or your bank account and see how much all your bills were. Um, you know, so you want to list things like your rent and or your mortgage. You want to do your cell phone bill, your gas, electricity, water, all your subscriptions, cable. You want to write all those down. This can also be a little bit tricky for some bills that do fluctuate a little bit month to month like your water bill or your gas or electric bill. So again, you're going to have to use a little bit of discernment and maybe budget that item a little higher. Um, say that, you know, on average, your water bill is $100 a month. Um, but sometimes you've seen it that it's gone as high as $150 a month. You know, maybe always just kind of guesstimate and budget that $150 a month because you'd rather be safe than sorry. The goal is that by the end of the month, you don't want to be in the red um, in your bank account. You don't want to have to accidentally overdraft your bank account because you thought that you were going to make a lot more that month or you thought a bill was going to be a lot less than it was. So always lowball on your um, monthly income and always kind of guesstimate a little higher on some of those bills you know that fluctuate. So once you have all your bills and their amounts, you're going to want to kind of start then subtracting those bills from the total amount of money you make a month. So if you make, you know, $2,000 a month, you want to subtract your bills from that. And then what you have left um, is what you then can use for, you know, food. So the most important things you want to do when you're making a budget is, you know, pay for your shelter. Make sure that's covered, right? That's the most important thing. Shelter, then food. And then after those things are taken care of, then you can start budgeting um, all your money that you need to go towards things like debt. So if you have credit card debt, you want to make sure that you have first have shelter over your head paid for. You want to make sure that you've been able to put food on the table. And then you can start looking into doing things like paying off credit card debt, student loan debt, um, and things like that. There's a couple different ways too that you can kind of keep track of your budget. You can start out just using pen and paper, write everything down, and once you kind of have that 
um, figured out that way, then you can either put that information into a budgeting app. Like I've mentioned before, I use the Every Dollar app, um, but I'm sure there's other budgeting apps out there. Um, you can also put in all the information into a spreadsheet. I think I've talked about that before. I've never done this. It sounds too confusing and exhausting to me, but I know some people really like spreadsheets. So if you're a spreadsheet person, go for that. So those are a couple different ways that you can keep track. Um, I really like using an app. What I do every day to just keep track of my budget is I open up my um, bank account app on my phone and I see what has come out and then I track that. So then I input that information into my budget. So as soon as we make our house payment, I go into my budget and mark that I paid that off. Give yourself a little bit of grace. The first couple months that you start a budget, there is definitely going to be some trial and error because you might think that you maybe only say spend $300 a month on groceries, that you spend closer to $400 on groceries, and that you spend a lot more money eating out than you realize. So you're going to have to kind of figure out um, how much, you know, on average, all those extra things cost, you know, how much how often you're going to the coffee shop to get a Starbucks or a Caribou, how often you get your nails done and, and how much that costs, how often you just kind of go shopping and buy a bunch of random stuff at Target that you don't necessarily need. I'm guilty of this, by the way. It's going to take some trial and error for the first couple of months, so give yourself some grace and be patient. But once you kind of see your spending habits and realize how much you spend and where your money's really going to, it can really end up being used as a tool to help you get ahead in life. Once you know where your money's going, even if you, you know, don't make as much as you want to be making right now, now that you know what you make, you know where it's going, you know where you can then start cutting back on it. For example, um, I feel like food is always the item in our budget that we always kind of struggle with. So I've learned to, you know, be more creative. I always shop, you know, like a store brand. So if I'm, say, at Target, you know, I'll use their Good and Gather brand because it's a lot less expensive than name brands. And to be honest, a lot of those places, um, their food is all made in the same factory anyway. So not shopping name brand can save you a lot of money. Um, if you're someone who likes looking at coupons and ads, that's another great way to save money in your grocery bill. Um, we hardly ever eat out, so that saves us a lot of money. Um, I try to make eating out an intentional thing that we do more for Brian and I, like going out for a date or a special treat for the kids. So that way, if we do eat out, it's planned and it's for something special, not just because I didn't have, you know, dinner planned tonight. So we're eating out. Um, so definitely if in the grocery um, line in your budget, the more pre-planning you do, you know, packing your lunch rather than eating out at work. Like those are really good ways to save money. And I'm not saying like never eat out ever again. Always pack your lunch every day of your life for the rest of your life. Um, the beauty of a budget is that you can, once you figure out like where your money's going, you can move money around to different areas. If you realize that you don't spend as much money um, on gas as you thought you did, then put a little bit of that money then towards your food budget because if you can't live without Starbucks, you know, maybe then instead of getting Starbucks every day, you can budget so you still get it like twice a week. Um, you want to make your budget custom to you. You want to make it work for you, not against you. Like when you're trying to budget, you know, there can be some stress because I would love to just go and spend as much money as I wanted whenever I wanted. Like I'd love that. I'd love to not have to worry about it and I'd love to go to Target and just impulse buy, but I know I can't do that, but I can give myself $50 that if I want to go spending and I want to go buy some candles or I want to go buy some makeup, you know, I make sure that that's also included in my budget so that I can still have some freedom to do the things I like. Just to kind of recap what we've talked about so far. So you figure out how much you make a month, you write down all your bills, when you're making a budget, you want to know where every single dollar you make is going. 
So the goal is to have, if you make, like I said, for an example, $2,000 a month, like once you're done making your budget and you subtract each item from that total $2,000 amount, you want to make sure that it um, equals zero. So once you have the amount of money you make every month, figure it out, and you have the amount of money that all your bills are, and you have all those written out and how much money you spend on food a month, you really want to have a line to in your budget for savings. So depending on what you're following um, in your debt-free journey, or if you're already out of debt, um, you want to definitely make sure you have emergency fund of three to six months living expenses. So whatever that is to you, the amount of money you would need if you were unemployed, lost your job so that you could at least survive um, without a job for three to six months. So you're gonna wanna start putting money towards that. Um, Definitely, it's a good idea to start budgeting money towards um, an amount you wanna put in your 401k if your um, employer offers a 401k. My employer does not offer a 401k, so I actually put money aside every month into a Roth IRA. I actually use the app called Acorns for that. If you're interested in hearing my opinion on Acorns, um, feel free to leave a comment about that below, and I'd be more than happy to make a video talking about the Acorns app and um, why I like it um, and why I use it. But I use that, I have an invest account with them, just a normal brokerage account, and I also have a Roth IRA through that, um, through Acorns. Um, Also, if you're interested in opening up Acorns account, I will share my link of that below as well for you. I think with the link, if you use my link, I get $5 invested into my account and you get $5 invested into your account. Um, So you're welcome to use it if you want to get an extra $5 invested for free into your account if that's something you're interested in. So I definitely would recommend trying to make in your budget saving a priority and trying to, if you can, putting a little bit of money aside, even if it's only $20 for something fun for yourself every month because, again, you want to still be able to enjoy life. You want to still be able to have fun while you're budgeting, while you're trying to save money, while you're trying to get out of debt. You don't want it to just be just a grind, grind, grind forever without also being able to reward yourself every now and then. Because life is too short to live in debt, but it's also too short to be miserable and not have fun at the same time. In recap today, you just got to start. Write down how much you make a month. Write down all your bills. Start budgeting how much money you think you need for food, eating out, gas. Um, Start budgeting money for savings. Even if after all your bills are paid, you can only save, you know, five, ten dollars a month. That's something you we all have to start somewhere and starting those little habits of saving over time, um, it will grow. And when you start making that a priority, you will start finding ways to save more money. I promise you. There was at one point where I think we saved literally 10, 20 bucks a month in savings. And now we are able to save way more than that, but it took a lot of um, dedication. It took a lot of practice and it took self-control to also not pull that money out of savings to spend. Make sure too that in your budget, you try and budget a little bit of money for yourself every month so that you can still enjoy life while living on a budget, while paying off your debt while making whatever financial plans that you have for your life. And remember that anyone can start a budget. Anyone can take control over their finances. It doesn't matter how much you make. If you start budgeting and you start being intentional with your money, you, I promise, can start making amazing things happen for yourself. If you enjoyed today's video, I am planning on sharing with you guys very soon a grocery haul shopping video. If you are interested to see how much I spend per week on groceries and what all I buy, please hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss it.